My name's Andy Aitchison. I'm a freelance photographer based in Folkestone in Kent. I received a tip-off that there was going to be something happening at the barracks at uh, 8 o'clock one morning. I just hung around for a little bit and then suddenly um, walking across the field next to the barracks I saw six people dressed in full white boiler suits, wearing face masks and carrying black buckets of liquid. They then approached the gate of the barracks. They unfurled these big banners that said, Preeti Patel, you're going to have blood on your hands, with the message, close Napier barracks now. And then they started throwing these buckets of blood-like liquid. They threw six buckets, threw the buckets on the floor. The security guards came down and they were filming what was going on protesters threw the buckets down and they walked off and I took some photographs of the process happening but then also of the aftermath and then the security guards started chasing the people who had done it and also um, I heard one of them saying get the guy with the camera so I just hurriedly walked around the corner <laughs> jumped into my car thought I'm you not going to <laughs> yeah I legged it I'm not going to have my cameras uh, confiscated I whizzed home and, and that was it job done started editing the pictures. About three o'clock that afternoon, my children came into the office and said, Dad, there's five police officers coming to the door. They banged on the door and they said, we need to come in and search your premises. They showed me a, a, a warrant. The first one said to me that we are arresting you on suspicion of criminal damage. Read me my rights and I got out my press card. I said, I'm a member of the press. There must have been some mistake here. I'm, I'm a journalist. I was out doing my job this morning. I said, well, I assume you're looking for the pictures that I took this morning. So I said, well, I'll just get you my memory card from my camera. I took it out of my camera and then he turned around and he said, is that your mobile phone? I said, yes. And he picked it up and he put that into a bag as well. Just disbelief that I was, I was being arrested for doing my job, really. They agreed not to put handcuffs on me because my children were in the house. Took me out to the police van my, my wife was crying my kids were standing at the window and I was like you know saying don't worry there's been a misunderstanding I'm going to be back um, very soon must have been a frightening moment though it was a very frightening moment and a, and a very worrying moment yeah it, it just felt like there'd been a big injustice that I was being arrested and initially I was really scared and upset and worried and then I was just like this is just stupid there's a misunderstanding we'll just get it cleared out and you know I'll be home in a couple of hours for tea but no, they took me down the station. They put me into a, a cell. They processed me with, with fingerprints, photograph and DNA swab. And they said, we'll get you a duty solicitor. I was in there for about six, six and a half hours, sitting on a crappy old mattress. I knew I was there in the right capacity and I just had to explain it to them, but they just didn't, didn't seem to get it really. And there's guidelines that the police have issued to them and it just felt that those guidelines are absolutely worthless unless they're adhered to. Either they didn't know about the guidelines, that in itself is worrying. If they didn't understand the guidelines, that's also worrying. Or either that someone else higher up the chain had told them to go and arrest me and take me in for questioning. And it felt like it was, that, it was the latter there. The first news article that came out, someone had retweeted it and they tagged Preeti Patel and her office, and it felt like they'd seen that, and within an hour of them seeing that tweet, I had a knock at the door. It sounds a bit sinister, but that's how it felt. It felt very sinister that there was powers that be from above that, that told them to come down and arrest me. And then a week after they dropped the charges, the police force issued me with a fixed penalty notice for breaching covid regulations and it said you were seen out taking photographs as a freelance journalist of this protest you were breaching guidelines so my solicitor wrote them a, a very long letter and within 24 hours the chief lawyer for the police for Kent police replied back and, and said it had been issued erroneously and that would be retracted as a fine if it was done stupidly in, in error then you know that's one thing. If it was done to harass me, that, that is a, a bigger issue. But th they say it was done erroneously, you know, of course they would. The guidelines are great and we all feel that they're there to protect us. But if they're not followed by the police officers and constabularies, then what's the point in the guidelines? Journalism in, in, in times of, of the COVID situation it is really, really key because people can't be out seeing what's going on or, or hearing about what's going on. So someone's got to be out there telling stories otherwise it just goes under the radar and what sort of state are we left with when we're back in into normal times